Hi everyone, this is Stephanie and I am back with another video today. Since I can't seem to get enough of foil, I'm going to use the Deco Foil by Thermoweb Transfer Gel Duo to create backgrounds with both foil and flock that are great for St. Patrick's Day or any occasion. I really have enjoyed working with this. It's very simple to use and you'll see that the results are stunning. These are the cards that I made with the backgrounds I created. This first one is just a foil, rainbow foil, very easy. The second one features both the flock, you can see it over here, as well as just a little strategic placement of foil down at the bottom. And for non-holiday cards, you can just use a different stencil and create stunning results with the gel and your manual die cut machine. So stay tuned, let's get into making today's backgrounds. For today's card project, I'm gonna be using the brand new Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo. This is very uh, new formula from the one that has been on the market before that was just called Transfer Gel. This one allows you to use a laminator if you would so like, or not. It also can use pressure, the one that, specifically the pressure that comes from running your project and through a die cut machine. So this I'm excited to try because I love the idea, but um, yeah, not so much the laminator. I have an inexpensive laminator that I don't use very often, so it always smells like it's burning. And so <laughs> I just stay away from it. And I have recently replaced my ancient cuttle bug with a Spellbinders Platinum 6, or uh, actually I get the Jane Davenport one. So just any die cut machine with plates. And the what really made me want to do some of this is this stencil here by scrapbook.com called Shamrocks. And I'll put a piece of black behind it. And this stencil is awesome. It is six by eight. So if you are a five by seven scrap, uh, card maker or scrapbooker or six by six scrapbooker or whatever this is six by eight so you have there is plenty of space on here um if you do larger formats other than standard four and a quarter by five and a half and this is called shamrocks and just for the fun of it i'm going to show you this other one i got called dandelions that i absolutely fell in love with isn't that just amazing again this is um six by eight stencil by scrapbook.com and yes, I purchased them myself. Um, in addition, I am going to be using this Avery L stamp set. It is called Loads of Happy. And it's really on trend with these label look um, occasions. They're not really sentiments necessarily, although there is happy for you, oh day. But it's Valentine's Day, birthday, Hanukkah, graduation, Easter, Halloween, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thanksgiving, St. Patrick's Day. So I have an Irish background, so I will be making a couple of St. Patrick's Day cards with the shamrocks and with the deco foil flock in emerald green. And I'm also going to be using the um, shattered rainbow. I always keep rainbow shattered glass and I have to pull this out this way. And this is just stunning. <laughs> love foil. Look at this. So you get five sheets of this in each container. So we will be using that today. And so I'm going to go ahead and clear the decks here and get ready to stencil. Now the one thing to know about this is that it is a um, a stenciling medium generally. Um, you could use it any way you want, usually through stencils, but it takes um, an hour to dry. So once it's clear, um, I guess it goes on kind of milky, and once it goes, once it's clear, then you can use it, but it takes an hour. <laughs> and normally I like to rush things along with a heat tool. However, I know from working with other types of mediums that they tend to bubble with the heat tool and that would just ruin the effect. So I am going to go ahead, stencil this, set it aside, and then finish the video later once it dries. So 
Let me get this here. That looks really cool. Um, I decided to try the new new purple tape by Thermo Web. It is very similar to the old purple tape. Here's the old purple tape. This has more of a um, texture to the top of it, just like masking tape does. It's got a masking tape texture. And as you can tell, it's kind of got quite a bit of stick, but it's really not bad. I do like working with this, but I thought I would try this. It says new lower tack, and I will say yes. It's very, very, very gentle. I, can, I cannot imagine this ripping anything. So this might be a new thing if you didn't like the old one or if you're used to washing and it rips your paper. I don't believe this will, but we're gonna be using it today. Actually, because you can, you can do, you don't have to go straight up and down if you don't want to. So I kind of like how that fits on the card. I'm using a Nouveau spatula. I love these things. They rinse off beautifully. And I wholehearted endorsement of those. I love those. I love it. This is very, very gel-like. Um, glossy, jelly kind of texture. So I am going to spread a layer over my card. Just kind of, I probably need more than that. Okay. I'm covering a big area, so I need to be a little generous, I think. Because I really want a smooth, smooth, smooth look to this. I am going to make sure it's in all the nooks and crannies. I'm going to do it all the way up to the edge. having an area over here that I want to make sure I get and you may not be able to see it on camera but I can in person how if there's a little bubble if I'm if I'm missing areas I don't want any gaps or voids I really would like this to be pretty smooth and this little thing won't do it as well so and get out our stencil pal and very gently run it over the top Okay. <sighs> Gotta be a little careful here. There. So let me wipe this up and maybe I'll do another one while I'm at it. Okay, and I'm gonna live dangerously and not tape this stencil down. We'll see what happens. And working with this, I can tell it has a slight odor. It is not bad at all. It's almost not noticeable. But I know some people are a little bit chemically, a little bit gluey maybe. Um, so I know if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, you might want to know that information. But I almost didn't notice it to begin with. Um, personally, I'm not sensitive to smells, but I know that some people are. And this is looking pretty good. Take a quick run over it with this. And it's getting very sticky. <laughs> and that's the point. When it dries clear, it will be sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse everything off really quick. And I will let this dry. And when we come back, we will start to have some fun with foil and flock. Okay, I am back 24 hours, times like two or three, <laughs> a couple days later. I actually um, put this aside to dry, and you can tell that they are um, shiny, and they are not very sticky. So that was kind of interesting to me that these are not very sticky, but I have actually um, let them dry a couple of days. 
Um, not be just because I got busy with other things. Um, so overnight is plenty of time. What I wanted to do next is apply both flock transfer and the deco foil um, to different parts of the background to make it look kind of interesting. And then we're going to run it through our die cut machine. And this comes in six by six sheets. And it's a kind of a fuzzy flock on a paper backer. And I'm going to cut these into little squares, I think. I think on one of them I might cut in squares. Uh, yeah, that could get kind of crazy, couldn't it? Let me cut it in big squares. Not sure. I kind of had the idea of just applying it to individual. So on one of them, I think I might. But I could quickly see how that could um, take a long time. If you had a larger background image, um, these are kind of small. If you had a larger background image, this first way of doing things probably would work out better, where you cut it in little squares and just apply it to the areas that you want. Now, if you wanted all of your shamrocks to be a fuzzy green, you could just lay the six by six sheet over your project and it would all transfer. Okay, for the foil part, this one out of the way for a minute. Let me take a sheet of foil and I'm cutting squares out of the foil and the foil is different. You want to lay the foil foil side up on your project. I also decided to bring in some foil I have left over from Christmas. This is also Deco Foil by Gina K. This is glittering green. So this one I am going to very carefully put aside. And actually what I think I will do is I'm just going to put it on my plates and get it ready because I will run this one through first. So I'm going to stick it on my platform. Of course I've got to make everything more complicated than it needs to be. And then I'm going to put another plate on. Oh look at the static. Horn. If you have static going on with your platform, I'm not sure why. This is a, a new tool to me, and these plates seem to have a lot of static association, associated with them. Um, that you might want to tape down your stuff if you're going to do kind of a patchwork like this, because that those just kind of jumped all over the place. I think I got it all. I'm going to do a simpler technique, and I'm going to get another piece of foil here. Time. I'm going to do a gold foil. This is also deco foil. And I want a decent size piece here. I'm going to be a little strategic. And I am picking a cluster of shamrocks out of my lineup that I'm going to make gold. And I just keep my um, full sheets in a job ticket and then I have a smaller envelope that I keep any of the scraps in. On the remaining. So this I'm just going to pick up and put aside. And 
I'm going to kind of clear the deck here and get my die cut machine out. Okay, so this is the one I made a patchwork on. There's a couple of different kinds of foil and flock on here. And I am just going to run it through the die cut machine with no cutting plates, but this is just going to sandwich this together and the pressure on it is supposed to make the foil stick. And I can kind of see the outlines a little bit here and there and I'm just going to go through one more time for the fun of it. So let me put this one aside. And it's sticking because of the static. I'm having some crazy static issues. I'm not sure. Again, if you guys have a Spellbinders machine, if you'll just let me know if you have some of the same static issues. I don't recall having this with my Cuddlebug. Um, my Cuddlebug didn't seem to have the static in the plates. Now this one is my other one where I put the gold foil on just one section face up. And then the rest is going to be flock that on my plates. Whoops. Everybody ready for the big reveal? This one will be the first one. Oh, how cute. Oh, how cute. <laughs> I think this is adorable. Oh, you know what? There was a little bit of flock underneath it, so there's a little bit of texture. So I can actually trim these pages. The edges probably had a little bit from the um, stencil, but these down here are gold. These are gold, and those are flock. And I'm just kind of rubbing it and just checking to see if there's any fallout and I'm not noticing any at all. That's actually kind of cool. I'm pretty happy with that. And now let's see what happened with the patchwork. Oops. Well, let's see what we can do. I'm seeing some that didn't quite make it. So this patchwork style might have been a little ambitious and I think a little bit of my issue is with the different heights because this is a thicker piece of paper than the foil is I'm not getting some, I'm getting some areas that didn't transfer um, foil wise not so much flock the areas that didn't transfer with the flock I didn't go all the way to the edge with the with the um, piece of paper that I had flock on. That's all that is. So here I have some that are foiled and some aren't. Now you can see some voids and stuff and I am not sure if I didn't um, catch those with the paste well enough. So what I think I will do so here I put the green foil on top of the whole background and let's see if we can catch anything that didn't get covered in the first round. Oh interesting. So I have actual voids in my original can see them here originally from when I put the um, transfer gel on so those are why I have some items that are have got holes in them so that's something I need to be a little more careful of in the future and then anything else that didn't that was sticky leftover that was sticky took all the green foil so I have a true patchwork here on this one. 
With this background, it was much more simple. I just did flock. I did a little square of gold foil here, and the rest is flock. And this I tried to patchwork it, so I've got kind of an interesting mix. And even some of the flocked areas that had areas that didn't get totally covered with flock took on more foil. So it's kind of interesting. This I would probably have to cut down and use because again, I missed some areas with the paste. And that is just something to be aware of when you're doing a background is to try to get it all with the transfer gel so that when you go to foil, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have white holes and white areas. It's kind of an interesting background. So I'm going to turn these into cards. Okay, for this round of cards, I went ahead and prepared the stenciled backgrounds, again with the shamrocks. I am going to put foil on the top of this one. Again, foil goes pretty side up. And then I'm going to put flock on the bottom, and flock goes fuzzy side down. So I'm just going to do that one, and then this one is just a sheet of the rainbow shattered glass on the background, the shamrock background. And I'm going to run these through my die cut machines and let's see what we come up with. Here's a public service announcement. If you have any edges that are not covered and have the gel on them, they will stick to your plates. So I probably should have covered all the edges. So here's the reveal for round two. Here's just the sheet of rainbow foil on the stenciled background. Oh, how fun. <laughs> and this did a much better job of transferring. If you take your time and do a good job of stenciling, there'll be less holes or less voids. There are a couple of really small ones, but with all the shiny going on, you don't really see it. So that's kind of cool. And another version of the patchwork. And I'm also not seeing any voids on this one. So the, the good news is that if you um, take a little bit of time when you're stenciling, you'll have much better results when you go to use the foil. I'm going to take some of these backgrounds and turn them into St. Patrick's Day cards.